Hey, it's Jake. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Triple Triad instead of chess. Uh, it's a fascinating game. Uh, obviously it's hard for things to compare with chess, but honestly in my game playing life this is the game that has come closest. Um, it comes from a game called Final Fantasy VIII. It's a card game mini game in this video game, uh, but there were websites devoted to it that expanded greatly upon the play. And in this video, I'm just going to talk about the basics of how the rules work, and then we're going to get into more advanced strategy. Uh, each card has four numbers, as you can see. The card I am currently on, uh, Cactuar, has a 6, a 2, a 6, and a 3. Each of those numbers face in a direction, so the 6 goes up. Uh, I won't point left and right, because I don't know if the camera's reversing, because I'm kind of dumb about mirrors. But uh, 2 to the right, 6 down, 3 to the left. If that card is placed next to a card of the opposite color, I am blue on the right, they are red on the left, or pink. Um, so for instance, if I was to play this card in this square that it's pointing to, I would have a 3 to the left, and they only have a 2 to the right, so I would capture, and their card would fit, flip to blue. And that's the basic uh, rule of the game, is simply higher number captures. And that may sound like it doesn't lead to a very complex game. It really does. Um, and then there are other rules that make it trickier. But the first rule is simply that's how capturing works. You can't capture your own card. Uh, if you play next to a card that's your own color and it is a higher number, the card stays your number. If it's a lower number, it all stays your color. Uh, cards can only flip of the other type when it's your turn. Uh, you are either blue or red. The game starts 5 to 5. You'll see it says the score at the bottom. That is because there are 5 blue cards and 5 pink cards. If I was to capture their card, then that would become blue and I'd go up to 6 and they'd go down to 4. At the end, the winner is whoever has the highest score. If it ends 5-5, five, five, it's a tie. Uh, second turn will have one card left in hand because there are only 9 cards on the board. That will still count for their score. Uh, what else is there important to know rule-wise? Uh, some nomenclature stuff. Uh, the numbers, the squares are commonly referred to by number. Uh, it's like a phone, so the top left is 1, top center is 2. I can highlight them. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I will sometimes say I'm going to go in 9 or something, and that's, that's what I'm referring to. The numbers on the cards are listed in clockwise order. So the Cactuar card I'm looking at is listed as 6263. Uh, this is unintuitive to some people. They would say 6326 or 6362, but we always go clockwise, 6263, starting at the top. Uh, so I guess the first thing, if you're unfamiliar with the game, is just to look, how many captures do you have? Uh, you'll notice their card has a 2 to the right and a 6 down. The 6 facing up and the 3 facing left do not matter right now. Uh, I have a friend who, when learning this game, kind of thought, I don't want to waste high numbers into walls. As it turns out, that's not such a big problem, but we don't have to get into that now. Now, they have a 6 down. Uh, in the square. Uh, their card is placed in 1, and they have a 6 down facing towards the square we call 4. Now, to take that, we'd need a 7 up or higher, which we do not have. So we can only take their out facing 2, facing towards the square 2. Now... Which cards of ours can take? If you want to pause the video and figure it out, there will be lots of little things like this to figure out, but this is pretty easy. Uh, our top card could certainly take it, because it is a 3. Uh, our next card also is a 3. Our next card is a 4. Uh, this 2 could not take it. The same number is not going to overpower it and flip it, and this card is a 3. So any of these 3 cards or this one could take it. This is our only card that cannot capture from 2. Now, generally speaking, this gets into a little strategy that we're probably not going to get too far into yet. But a good idea is to think, I want to use the weakest card that achieves my goals so I can keep stronger cards for later. And for now, uh, higher numbers seem better. This is uh, the card with our lowest total number. So we're going to try to capture with this one and just look at how capturing works. So I play here. Their card flips, I'm up 6-4, then they go, they took back, it's 5-5. Five, five. Now, I want to get into two more concepts besides capturing. Safety and securing. So if we went in this square, in 4, nothing could ever touch 1 again. Any card we put in 4 would block 1 off from the rest of the board. And I call that securing the card. That card is ours forever. And a secured card is worth a lot more than just a captured card. 
And I think new players to this game often focus on captures when they should be focusing on securing cards. Another concept is being safe. Safe does not mean it's blocked in, but it is a high enough outfacing number that it won't be taken anyway. So I have a question for you. Is our card in one, is Cactuar safe? The 6 2 6 3 and 1. Is it safe? Can they take it? The answer is no, it's not safe. It is a 6 down. We cannot take a 6 down, but they have a 7 up, so they can take it. So it's not safe. So one thing we should strongly consider is putting a card in 4 and securing one forever. However, if we went in 5, we could secure 2 forever, and if we went in 6, we could secure 3 forever. So all these moves have reason to do. Um, one thing I'd look for is if we go in any of these squares, do we threaten to secure more cards next turn? So for instance, one move I like, sorry, I keep clicking the wrong buttons, is this card here. It secures something, it secures the card in three, and it has low outfacing numbers, which may seem weak, but it makes it easy for us to recapture. And again, we don't care that much about captures, we care about securing cards. So because it has low outfacing numbers, it will be easy for us to secure down the road, and it secures a card already. And as I said earlier, we often want to use the weakest card that achieves a goal, and our 6112 is a relatively weak card. It has low numbers. So I'm going to play here. Now, they captured back. And now, again, I have a securing choice. Um, again, we care about securing, not capturing. So we have two things we could secure. This card in 5 we cannot secure, because it is two directions facing it, so even if we take it from one direction or the other, they do have the possibility to capture from the other square, so it wouldn't be secure. Now we could make it safe. If we took it from 8, the card in 5, they can't take it from 4. You'll notice their power to the right, their highest number is a 1. They can't take a 5. So we could make this card safe, but whatever card we put in 8 would be pretty vulnerable. Now another thing we could do, is we could play in four, and again, that would secure one, and that seems good. Now, once we're securing a card, it would be nice if we could also play safely. Now, they have a seven going up, so we have nothing strong enough down that it will be safe. So we'd secure a card, but we wouldn't get a second card because our card wouldn't be safe. And so I'd, I'd say we'd want to look for more. And the other square we could think to play is nine. It's easy for us to capture six. When we played in six, we knew it had weak outfacing numbers. That's favorable. And so we can take it easily with any of our cards, and you'll notice they only have a 1 to the right. So anything we put in 9 will have a high enough number, they cannot capture it. And again, I always want to use the weakest card that can achieve my goal to save my stronger cards for later. So I'm going to use 4243, the Caterchipler, to take, and we're now up 6-4. They can tie at 5-5, five, five because we didn't ever secure that card. But now, we can easily take the card in 5, they only have a 1 to the right, so either card we put in 8 will put us up 6-4, and we'll be safe. So I'm going to play here, they play in 7, and we win. Uh, at the end of a game, you can pick cards from the opponent. Uh, this doesn't really matter for learning to play better, but it does matter if you ever want to play FF8. Any card in, with a white name is a card we already have, and you can see where it says Snow Lion, it's in blue, that means I do not yet have it. So I'm going to take Snow Lion and Anacondor, because those are two cards I do not have yet. Um, okay, we're going to play one more game, just to reiterate the principles. Give it a sec, game can load slowly. Uh, so we challenge this person. Uh, FF8's AI is not very smart. Uh, I might show off, yeah, I think I'll show off a kind of uh, stupid exploitative strategy against it. So we have some better cards. We have a, you know, a card with 7543 that's pretty strong at this point. But we're going to use some fairly weak cards. We're going to use this. Um, I like Caterchipler. Let's grab Fungoir. Let's take one strong card. Just give us a little directional strength. And that looks interesting. Yeah, let's go Belhamel. Okay. Ah, we didn't get first turn. Well, this ruins all my schemes. So we look at their card, and one quick thing to do that's, I think, useful is to make a super card of what is our strongest card, number in every direction. So we have a six up on two different cards. Our highest is a four to the right, so we're a bit weak to the right. That's instantly important to know. We have a six down, 
We only have a three to the left. So we're very, very bad hand side to side, pretty good hand up and down. But that tells us if our best card is essentially six, four, six, three, can we take their seven, five corner? No, we cannot. We don't, we don't have an eight down. We don't have a six to the right. We can never take that card. It is safe. So I guess I'm going to get into a new principle, which I call the rule of evens, which is the idea of any time we play a card, we want it to be vulnerable. This isn't going to hold up as we get more complicated, but it's a good starting place, is we want it to be vulnerable in even number of directions. We don't want to play a card that is strong one way and weak the other. They will take it the way it is weak, and we will not be able to retake it the way it is strong. We would rather a card that is strong in both directions, their card in nine, uh, Abyss Worm, which my friend calls Pez Dispenser because he thinks it looks like that, is safe because it is strong in two directions, right? We can't take it from either direction. So it's weak zero ways, it follows the rule of evens. Now, we don't have a card that would be safe to play. Uh, one way to look at that is, do we not? Actually, we do, but uh, I haven't actually looked. Um, but let's look at their super card. That's a quick way to check. They have a five up, a three to the right, a five down, and a six to the left. So their super card is five, three, five, six. And we immediately think, wow, they're really weak to the right. So if we put out a card even with just a three left, that'll be safe. And we only need a five up to be safe. So in fact, 5113 is safe in either 6 or 8, because they cannot take its 3 or its 5. So that's definitely worth remembering. Uh, 6263 th is also safe in the same directions. Our other cards are not. But I would rather use, again, the weaker card. The 6263 is just much stronger. So I would use the 5113 and be happy we're safe. Uh, that's one way to go. Uh, that's a very good, reasonable move and I'm only not going to do it because I'm trying to show something here. But this tells us these might be two good cards to hold on to, because if we ever play them in six or eight, they will be completely safe. Uh, so we might want to use some of our other cards because they're going to be less useful. So this idea of checking the opponent's super card, what's their strongest value in each direction, can be really useful in finding safe moves and finding what direction they might be weak in and giving ourselves candidate moves. Uh, so, zero weaknesses is good, but if we don't have zero weaknesses, two weaknesses is actually pretty useful, because when they take one way, we can take the other, and that will often secure the card. So I know these two cards are good, so I'm going to use Red Bat as an example. I'm going to put Red Bat in one. It has two ones out facing. It is the weakest card it could be. And because the computer's AI is dumb, it will capture it, and we can recapture the other side, and we will be the first to secure a card. So they have captured and now any card we play in four will secure a card. And the score will only be 5-5, five, five, but we will have a card secured and they will not. And that gives us, I think, a pretty big advantage here. Um, I could spend a while calculating this position and try to figure out if we can tie, if we win, whatever the result is, but I'm just going to play this card here. And the reason I choose Caterchipler is because I know these two cards might be safe later, and are safer than this. Though they did use their five down, so actually, at this point, Caterchipler is safe in six or eight. And I should really uh, be pausing this video and kind of asking, find all the safe moves. But our safe moves are, and you can pause and try to find them, we have Caterchipler in six, because they do not have anything stronger than a four down or three to the right. Caterchipler in eight for the exact same reasons, it's vulnerable in the same directions. Uh, Fungoir is safe in the exact two squares. Cactuar is safe in both of those squares, but also in three, because it's six down is something they can't beat. So we have a lot of safe moves, and how many moves do we have that secures a card? Again, you can pause and find out for yourself. But any move in four will capture the card in one, any move here will capture the card in one, and give us a secured card. And for now, I'm going to value securing over safety. Obviously, they both give us a card the opponent can never take. But I think focusing on securings is good for developing as a player. So I wanted to use Caterchipler in 4 because it's the weakest card, I thought, because 5113 was safe and 4243 was not. But now that they've used the card they used in 2, this 5252, they don't have the down power they used to, so suddenly 4243 gained in value and is again, as it probably should usually be, a better card. So we use the weaker card to secure the card in 1. Really hope this makes sense and I'm not going too fast. Okay, strange move. 
Um, so I guess my questions for you are, how many moves do we have that secure a card? How many moves do we have that are safe? How many moves do we have that are captures? You can pause if you want. Okay, so it turns out in this position, any move that secures a card is also a capture. For instance, 4, 2, 4, 3, and 6 captures the card in 3, Blabra, a you know, hideously ugly card, and that card will be covered on both sides, so it will be secure. We could also secure it with 6, 2, 6, 3 here, or 3, 4, 5, 3 here. Any of these cards will secure the card in 3, and we will have a second secured card. Notice they don't have any. Um, we only have one capture from 5 with our 6, 2, 6, 3. It will secure the card in 2, so both these moves secure a card. However, the next question should be, can we secure a card and be safe? And do we have any safe moves? And what are our safe moves? So uh, the safe moves are stuffed because they're still by far weakest to the right. Our safe moves are 4, 2, 4, 3, and 4, 6, 2, 6, 3, and 4, and 3, 4, 5, 3, and 4, because they have no power rightward at all. So it really looks like we should go in 6, because we can both secure the card in 3, Blabra, and have a safe card. And again, I want to use my weakest card, and I think that's 4, 2, 4, 3 here. So I will play this one. And now we're up 6, 4 with two secured cards. Now notice in response, they were capable of securing the card in 2. So we only lead two secured cards to one. However, on our final turn, we can capture and win. Uh, I'd like you to pause and find every move for us that wins. Note the score is 5-5. Five, five, so to win, we will have to capture something, and they must not be able to capture anything back. Or we could double capture, though we don't have any double captures here. So pause and solve. All right. Uh, any card in 8 wins. We capture the card in 5 to go up 6-4, and we have, with this either card, a 3 facing the left that they cannot capture, so we'll win 6-4. We also have a win in 7. Uh, specifically, 3-4-5-3 three, three has a 4 to the right. Their 3 to the left can't take it. 6-2-6-3 six, six, and 7 would be a horrible mistake because our 2 to the right is not strong enough and their 3 could take it. So I'm going to play this win because I think the wins in 8 are a little more obvious and I try to play the cuter win when I get the chance. So I'm going to play 3-4-5-3 three, three, and we win 6-4. So let's... Uh, Alright, yellow cards are cards I had and lost. I was uh, winning cards and losing them back to the computer on this account because I was messing around for various reasons. Um, that when I, I say that, when the name is yellow, like Abyss Worm, when the name is blue, it's because we never had it, and when the name card, uh, the name of the card is white, it means we already have a copy. So I will get back my Pez Dispenser. Um, so okay, let's quickly go over concepts. Uh, captures is simply the higher number. When you play a higher number towards a card the opponent controls, you flip it. If you don't, nothing flips, uh, at least according to the current rules we're looking at. Um, Safe cards are cards with high enough outfacing numbers, meaning numbers facing towards the squares that might be able to take them, that nothing the opponent has is strong enough to take them. Secure cards are cards that have been surrounded on all available sides and can never be taken. And the rule of evens is the idea that you want to card vulnerable an even number of ways. If it's vulnerable zero ways, then it's totally strong. It's already safe. You're delighted. If it's vulnerable two ways, then any time they take it, you can take it back the other. But you really don't want your card to be vulnerable one way, because then they take it and there's nothing you can do in return. So you're really looking to follow the rule of evens when we play. And I think for a lot of players it's very unintuitive. For instance, the move I played, the first move I played in this most recent game, where I put the 6-1-1-2-1 and one with its two ones facing out, that might seem strange to people unfamiliar with the game. But it was very much following that, that rule of evens, which I think is a really useful principle to follow. You know what? Let's play one more. Just keep it going. Uh, see if we can get some good examples. Uh, so this time I'm just going to pick a really strong hand. I'm going to pick my best cards. Just high numbers all the way. Uh, we will have a much better hand than them last time than last time or the previous games, because I want to give an example where I can ask you, find all of our safe moves, because we're going to have a lot more now. So you should pause, find all the safe moves. 
This brings us to a principle I forgot to recap, recap uh, the idea of the supercard. If we look at the opponent's supercard, they have a 7 up, they only have a 3 to the right, again, they're very weak to the right, they have a 6 down, and they have a 5 to the left. So their supercard is 7, 3, 6, 5. And we know weak to the right, maybe a little weak to the left. Okay, so that's helpful. Now, let's look at each of our cards. 7, 5, 4, 3, the naturally strongest place to put it is in 7, with its 7 and 5 out facing. Uh, they only have a 5 to the left, so they can't take it that way. And 7 is the highest number available on this rule set, so I don't even have to look at their cards to know they can't take the 7 upwards. So that's a safe move. Is this card safe anywhere else? Well, it's safe in 9, because they only have a 3 to the right. And if it's safe in 7 and 9, it's even safe in 8, despite having 3 outfacing numbers, they can't take it anyway. So we have 3 safe moves with that, this card. With Adamantoys, uh, the obvious place to look is in 3, but they have a 7 up, our 5 down doesn't cut it here. The next obvious place to look, again, we know they're weak to the right, so our first places to look are on the, the right side of the board, uh, but they do have a 6 down, so it's not going to be safe here, and because we know they can take it going upwards and downwards, it's not going to be safe in any of the other corners either. We have no safe moves with 4, 5, 6. Four, five, five, six. Doesn't mean it's going to be useless, but we don't have any safe moves with it. Uh, seven, five, uh, 2, 3, 5, Pez Dispenser, uh, really looks like it fits in 9. If we look at their cards, we know they're weak to the right, they can't beat the 7 facing up, so we have one safe move with this card. With 6, 2, 6, 3, very similar. It's going to be safe in 9. They only have a 3 to the right. They have a 6 down. Those aren't enough to take it. It would not be safe in 3 because their Pez Dispenser could take us. Finally, 5633, three. the obvious square to check, is in 7, but they do have a 6 down, so we have no safe moves with this card. So we now know we have one safe move here, three safe moves here, and one safe move here. Which one would we play? Well, Again, I really think the idea of using your weakest card first, your weakest card that accomplishes whatever goal you have. In this case, our goal is to play safely. I think on this rule set, the principle should be look at captures, look at safety, look at securing. Probably in the opposite order. Look at securing, look at safety, look at captures. And if you don't have those options, consider a move that follows the rule of evens. Now, safety follows the rule of evens, as we know. Zero sides vulnerable follows the rule of evens. Now, our 7543 is safe in three different squares. That means this card is just going to be awesome. They're just probably not going to be able to touch it. It'll be able to capture things. I would rather use a card that has fewer safe squares. So this time, I'm going to use the 7235 and 9. You might think this is a better card than the 6263. We could argue over that. It might be. Um... But in this case, the 6263 has some downward power, and while the 7235 has power, I think, is more redundant in the hand, so I'm going to use the card that's a little more redundant and play it in a safe square. Now, they went in one. So if the first thing we're looking at is captures, which probably shouldn't be, but let's look at captures first, can we capture this card? Yeah, we can capture it from two with literally any card in our hand. Uh, that's the card to the right, uh, square to the right of it. And from four below it, we can capture with two of our cards: Hexa Dragon seven five four three and Cactuar six two six three. So we have ways to capture. So is it safe? If we capture it, will they be able to capture back? Now, of course, they can capture back the two. So we should be more tempted to take from the two and force them to capture the five, which they have one way to capture back with Pez Dispenser. At this point, I do think we have better moves and should move on from this. But it is worth noting, um, we've had the principle of try to use our weakest card that accomplishes our goal. Now, Pez Dispenser is by far their best card, and forcing them to use it early might be really beneficial because they're left with really garbage cards. Um, so that might be an argument for considering such a move. I think here we have such a kind of, our hand's just much stronger than theirs, and there's real luxury here to do whatever we want. So why concede them anything? Why concede them a secure card? So captures, I think the only argument here is that we could force them to use their best card. Uh, and if they didn't go, if we went in two and they didn't respond in four, then we'd have first access to secure. This would be their only move that secures. So they would probably be forced to go there. But okay, we don't need to give them a secure card. 
So the next thing is, can we secure anything? No, we cannot. There is nothing that can be blocked in. And can we make any safe moves? And the same moves that were safe last turn are basically safe this turn, which is to say it used to be the corner 9 was safe, and now 6 and 8 are both safe as they face the same directions to the uh, up and to the left. So a card like 6263 is safe in either of these squares. Um, we might think, okay, if we play it in either of these squares, the square next to it, they only need one strong direction to be safe. In this case, if we go in 6, they only need a value strong to the left to be safe. Or if we go in 8, and they can go in 7, they only need a high up value. So let's quickly consider that. Um, they do have high up values to put in 8, for instance a 7. Uh, in 3, they only have a 5 to the left and we can take that. So I'm going to go in 6. Uh, again, we have two cards that could be safe there, the 7543 and the 6263, and I'm going to use the card I think is weaker. I think we identified at the start that with the two given hands, this card's going to be the most valuable. So I'm going to use Cactuar. Again, this follows the idea of safety, but it also follows the rule of evens. It's vulnerable zero ways. I'm going to play here. All right. Now, we could play in four and secure the card in one, but we can also play in three and secure ourselves. And that's useful too. And so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play the secure move in three. I'm gonna say because the cards are at the top and on the right, I want to keep up left value to be able to take stuff later. But maybe Adamantoise just has more strength than uh, Ochu in general. So I'll just play Ochu in three, and it will secure itself. They will presumably recapture from five. They did not. Uh, we were winning there, but you know, yeah, is not very good. So now, again, what moves secure? That should be our top principle. You know, checking captures is useful, but securing is the most useful. And our options to secure. We could play in four and secure one, or we could play in five and secure two and six. We're going to secure two cards, and we're going to do it with high outfacing value, a six to the left, and keep our best card for last turn. We now take a 7-3 lead and we're going to win 7-3. So, anyways, that's that's the core idea of Triple Triad, so I'm going to reiterate because it's so important, and if you want to learn to be good, you should probably reiterate these things to yourself, because vocalizing ideas yourself is the best way, I think, to grasp them. Uh, so, the basic function of the game is you capture cards with higher numbers facing towards them. We want to secure cards. We don't care as much about capturing if it doesn't secure, we want safety, meaning there is no card capable of taking it. An easy way to check for safety is to look at the opponent's super card, what are their highest values in every direction, and can they overtake your card? Do they have enough power to? Um, then we have the rule of evens, which is our first really strategic principle. And we also have this idea of if we have a goal, if we like want to secure a card, if we want safety, what is our weakest card that can do so, so we can keep more power for later? Uh, let me also say the FF8 AI is really bad. Playing against good humans is a totally different experience. But if you want to go play FF8, you can, um, very early in the game, you can start playing Triple Triad and get a good experience because it really is quite a complex game. Uh, cheers.